Oh, my bad guys. We forgot to turn on external frame buffer emulation for this video. There we go. The external frame buffer is a region in memory where the GPU puts finished frames prior to scan out to the screen. Before Hybrid XFB, there were three settings for how to handle the XFB. XFB disabled is a bit of a misnomer. It's still emulating XFB, albeit in a very casual way. When the GPU calls XFB copy and instead of actually copying the frame to memory where it belongs, we display that directly to the screen. This hack is surprisingly effective as most games don't modify the frame after it's done rendering. Developers looking to use every aspect of the GameCube or Wii could modify the frame though. If they do, taking the XFB copy and throwing it directly on the screen won't work out too well. Good job. You found Jabba's palace. Star Wars Rogue Squadron 2 has issues with the pause screen in XFB disabled. But why? It's because several games in the GameCube library use a different pixel format than the default. While this pixel format is nicer and supports 3 times anti-aliasing, it can't fit into the GameCube's 2MB embedded frame buffer. In order to counter this, games like Rogue Squadron 2 will render the game in halves to bypass that limitation and stitch the frames together with video interface. Because XFB disabled just feeds in default values, this doesn't work. By slowing down the footage, we can see XFB disabled mucking up the process. To emulate this effect, we'll have to emulate more of the pipeline. Dolphin has a second form of XFB emulation that supports basic tricks, like this, known as XFB Virtual. This supports using the VI registers that the game set, so alternative video output modes like this work. Unfortunately, XFB Virtual was limited in the cases it could handle. Speaking of which, let's boot up Tomb Raider Legend on the Nintendo GameCube. Notice a problem. The game isn't frozen, it's just stopped rendering with the GPU. This video is loaded directly with the CPU and never calls XFB copy. Hence, neither XFB Virtual nor XFB Disabled have any idea what to do with it. This is where XFB Real comes in, as Dolphin's true attempt at emulating everything correctly. XFB Real drops any pretense of being performance friendly in order to get accurate output. Its dedication to being accurate allows edge cases like this to work perfectly, but it comes at a pretty devastating cost for most users. If you're watching this video in high definition, you may notice that things look a little blurrier in this demonstration than the others. That's because not only is XFB real slow, but it lacks the ability to do high resolution output. This is a consequence of following the pipeline directly. The XFB is stored in the console's actual RAM, so we can't store a gigantic XFB there without overwriting other data. So even if you have a powerful PC, you may not want to turn on this feature for higher accuracy. In Super Smash Bros. Brawl, you'll see an annoying green bar whenever you finish a stage in Classic Mode without XFB Real enabled. That's because Brawl will read from the XFB to take a screenshot of your victory. Because it's so performance intensive to store the XFB into emulated RAM, only XFB Real does it correctly. While enforcing XFB Real fixes it, most users would rather have performance and higher resolution visuals, so it's left disabled. While XFB Disabled, XFB Virtual, and XFB Real did cover the entire library, each had their limitations and caused frustration. XFB Disabled was around simply because XFB Virtual often behaved worse than no XFB emulation at all. XFB Real, while accurate, came with so many limitations that it was rarely used. Hybrid XFB is our new solution to XFB emulation. Hybrid XFB hooks up external frame buffer emulation to the texture cache and presents us with two options with sane limitations. 
The first of these, store XFB copies to texture only, is the less accurate of the two. While it follows most of the pipeline accurately, it takes a detour when it comes to storing the XFB to RAM. Instead of doing that, it stores it outside of main memory, where it can be any size. Because it follows the pipeline correctly, it supports all VI effects, and almost every game should work perfectly. Not having the XFB copy and RAM does cause issues for some games, though. Metal Gear Solid, The Twin Snakes, and Super Smash Bros. Brawl both read the XFB to do various effects. This is where the second option comes in. Store XFB copies to texture and RAM. Why not just store XFB copies to RAM? Well, one of the reasons most users never wanted to use XFB Real was the resolution limitations. Store XFB copies to texture and RAM does not have that limitation. Brawl is running in crisp high definition, yet when we finish a fight, Dolphin detects that the game is modifying the XFB and uses the copy in RAM for that frame. When the game isn't touching the XFB, we just use the copy stored in a texture, which can be any resolution we want. With that, Hybrid XFB can handle every situation that can be thrown at Dolphin without the limitations and bugs present in older implementations. For more examples and information, click the article link in the video description. You'll be able to read more about how other cases are handled and some of the additional challenges developers faced.